left this morning from Wangi at a very decent 10.30 in the morning to ride in the bus to Victoria Falls. Along the way, we saw many examples of traditional housing. In rural areas, Africans live in villages and on farms in housing that's made mainly of brick or mud and stick construction. This area is set up for a farmer's market, but not today. But here's some ladies along the road selling their produce on a windy day. Here's one of the original steam trains from the early 1900s. But today, you can take a steam engine dinner uh, ride across the bridge on the falls and have a four-course meal prepared by the chefs of the five-star Victoria Falls Hotel. Remember the currency here is U.S. dollars? Okay, so this is our hotel. Welcome to the Victoria Falls Hotel. Here's the inside of our room at the Victoria Falls Hotel with our beautiful mosquito netting, twin beds, air conditioner that sounds like a tornado, fairly large screen TV, interesting bathroom, and one thing I've never seen in the amenities is insect repellent. This hotel's over a hundred years old and they've tried to preserve a lot of the colonial charm. And we also have a clothesline. After settling in, the highlight was to go see the famous Victoria Falls. But first we have to learn about them. Guys, this is uh, the, the part of the river of the falls that we are going to look at it. This section here. Um, this came to exist after a volcanic eruption. So when that lava cooled down, it hadn't, and the earth cracked. So these are cracks. There are about mm. seven of them, mm. or eight of them. Those who are going to go on the helicopter, you will see them. They are actually below the falls. No crack above the falls other than this one. Okay. And there's another crack coming up right from this end here, and it's going like this into Zambia. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we are told this is the last crack. This is all because of climate change. Okay. So this is the upstream of the Zambezi River, and this is the downstream of the river. And the river pours into the Indian Ocean. It flows into the Indian Ocean. And it's approximately 1,400 kilometers from here. And the river was a bit more commercialized downstream than upstream. So we have uh, Lake Kariba in Zimbabwe for hydroelectric power, and Lake Kaborabasa between uh, Malawi and Zambia for hydroelectric power. So the river was more commercialized downstream than upstream. Okay? So we are here, and from here we walk all the way to this end here. So this is our first photo stop. And this is the way actually we find, we see the statue of David Livingstone and the statue is actually overlooking the falls. Okay, so we're not walking upstream from the statue, we make a U-turn and then we walk towards the east. So this is the eastern end of the falls, up to this end here. Okay, this is the section of the falls uh, which Brian mentioned in the bus where you see the Victoria walls, there is no water here. This part, it's a 500 meter stretch on the Zambian side. And this is the section of the river with water this time of the season. Okay, so the native name, Mossi Oya Tunya. Mossi Oya Tunya, meaning the smoke that thunders. And like Brian mentioned, this is one of the seven natural wonders of the world. Okay. So Victoria Falls is higher than either Iwasu in South America or Niagara Falls. So Iwasu Falls is the widest, and both Niagara and Iwasu have more water per second. But 38,000 cubic feet 
per second sure seems like a lot to me. Here's a picture of the falls in high water in March, but we're here in October when there's much less water at the end of the dry season. Here's a map of the falls with the uh, photo opportunities highlighted, but it's a good overview of the whole width of the falls. About a five minute walk and here's our view. Falls wow. and rainbow. There used to be water over here on the left, but with the low uh, water I'll level, it's dried up. After the end of colonialism in countries in southern Africa got their independence, a lot of places got their names changed, but nothing that had Livingston on it, because he was so revered as a doctor, he had saved thousands of lives. And so here's his statue. Water gushing down this chute. And then we've got another section of falls in the back. It used to be all water. Here's the Zambezi River as it heads down to this chute and a huge big waterfall. We can't see how far down it goes from here. When the water level is higher, this island out here is totally submerged by water. The water coming down that big chute still can't see the bottom, but we do have a rainbow and beautiful ferns. And it's very misty, which is really quite nice on this very hot and humid day. And you see these little riblets that I still can't see where it enters the river below. In the season, there's water coming all the way across here. Up here from this chute, look at all these people out here. I know there's some place where people go into the water, but I don't know where it is. And I don't see any of them in the water. Shoot again. And sometimes it's all covered with water. There's some more of the falls constructed by foliage. And just about see where this chute goes into the river. More falls. Rather noisy. So this tree trunk looks just like a rhino. Rhino tree. There's the people who like to sit at the edge of the falls where there's evidently a pretty deep pool. The end of the fall there has a lip. Still, I'm not interested. You can see this mist coming up creates actually a rain, not even just a mist. Okay, we're a little closer to the swimmers. Is here how this is just a big crack in the earth. Mist, noisy falls, swimmers, rainbow. And a little bit on down here. After a hike along the edge of the cliff, a lot of people like to have a little liquid refreshment. There is also an opportunity for some shopping. I didn't know we were going to have entertainment with dinner, so I didn't bring my camera. But here's some interesting pictures of these elaborate uh, costumes, and this man is on stilts. Oh, 